it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, this is the third show in a series of three on remote viewing. Um, remote viewing and mind control is sometimes confused. So in the very beginning, you saw us flashing something else at you. We, and we wanted to see if he was paying attention. Now, I had an awful lot of call on the whole subject. And um, um, today, all the questions that were raised as to the actual people, I, I, I think you're going to have a good time um, meeting all the actual players in, in some of the original projects that were put together um, for and by our government um, uh, 30 years ago. And so I think what I want to do today without giving you my own thoughts or anything, I'm just going to uh, go to all these inserts, and we have many of them, and uh, share these interviews that um, these, pe uh, these friends were nice enough to give me while I was at the remote viewing conference in Austin, Texas in, uh, in 2002. So as soon as we can set up, we will start right, um, we can start right with the inserts, and the first person you're going to meet, his name is uh, John Kovacs, and uh, a delightful young man, and uh, we had a really nice um, visit there. And like I said, I will s save my personal thoughts for the end of the show, if we have any time left, that is. And um, so go right ahead and enjoy the uh, five, five interviews that uh, you're going to be seeing today, and um, I'll, every once in a while I'll tell you, there you go, maybe be quiet now, here you go, enjoy, uh, John Kovacs. Well, well last night, oh, and I haven't yeah. slept well for a week, no so, slept well. <laughs> so I, that's a good thing, if I didn't get sleep well last night, I would be feeling much different, so my energy level is a little bit better right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, I... This is my first personal visit to one of the conferences, mm -hmm. even though I'm real familiar with the material. Uh -huh. I think they must be one of the most powerful minds on the planet. Yeah, so there's no doubt about that, plus pioneering individuals mm -hmm. that are really don't care about what people think about them. Yeah. They're, they're going forward, and then, even though there may be some individuals in the audience who are secretly um, against or don't feel that what they're saying is correct, they're still open enough to share it with us. Mm -hmm. You know, I found that this discipline, even though that there's a lot of individuals, which I thought were like minds, mm -hmm. and were a very small sect, extremely small, there's only a few hundred people here throughout the whole world, mm -hmm. still there's a lot of infighting with people who disagree about what's going on, and it's sad. It is like the, the keynote speaker is Ingo Swan. We'll talk about him in just a minute. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he explained is boxes of reality. Yeah, absolutely. And so you have all these people, and each one of them has a different box. Isn't that funny about really what reality is? And when one truly starts to think about that, if you're thinking about how much you've personally experienced in your life versus what you have been read and what you have been told. Mm -hmm. What you have been read and what you have been told is much more about the whole world and the history of time, reality, and what's going on in the universe versus what you've truly experienced. So what our whole reality really construct is, is information that's passed on down to us. And we all know that the powers to be want to control us, and uh, who knows how much we've been lied to. So what is, how much truth is there in my personal being about what I know about the universe, the galaxy, my own world, and Earth, and history, as they say, the victors write history. Mm -hmm. So it's just very mind-blowing when you really start to walk around and look around and say, what's going on? Did you get to watch the news last night? No, I, no, I did not. They, they called it the nuclear quake. Um, it was where, a, where, well, where actually, did this occur? Uh, in Nevada, in, uh, I, I saw some of the videos they carry here. And I think it was right in Area 51, an actual earthquake. And this was on the news? Last night, uh-huh, yeah. And they called it a nuclear? A nuclear quake. And what did they mean by that? Oh, they didn't clarify that. Well, that is a very strange term, don't you think? <laughs> it is, yeah. Well, you know, the way, the way everything is set up, we know something has to give some way, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, the powers to be, they just have their own agenda. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. but, but just maybe uh, we're looking at something um, on the outside here, you know, that expands. And we are only briefly touching on it, 
how much information can you get in a one-hour lecture? Some individuals who Ingo said that he trained up to four and a half years, one-on-one -on -one every day. And I heard Ingo from my instructors, Paul Smith and Lynn, and Lynn Buchanan, that he is a very exacting person, that he does not let you slide. So it's no wonder that after four and a half years spending with a person like Ingo Swan, that, that you can accurately remove you. Half of what probably Ingo did was, is get you outside the box. He has to get you out of the outside of the box yeah, first, the box. and then we can go ahead and start talking about being a remote viewer. Now, are you familiar with Elton Bird? No, I'm not. I'm talking, I've never heard about him. Um, I'm not really sure what he does, but I have listened to one of his lectures, and um, he talks about uh, a good memory in, in cells and all oh. kinds of things. Okay. You know, it's basically the same like what you know, we talk about sometimes, mm -hmm. and, my, and some of the friends in, on my shows, we have covered those, so they're familiar with the subject. Oh, okay. But the, where I'm going with this, what he said, he said, I am here to talk to you for one hour. Mm -hmm. You cannot absorb what I tell you. Absolutely not. So if you allow me, I want to tell you, listen with your brain. Absolutely. Let me put it there and then you can sort it out later. There's a lot of people who don't understand that. It works. Oh, I'm sure it does. Mm -hmm. Sure it does. In fact, that's how they get you in advertising. Mm -hmm. They bombard you, and they're not, they're experts, and they're not speaking to your conscious mind, they're speaking to your subconscious mind, and you're, and uh, they uh, feed on uh, and make you want all this materialism. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely no point for it. There's no point for you to go out and work hard so you can drive around in a car. That's right. You yeah. need to be out reading books. That's what you need to be out yeah, doing so and not driving around in a car. That's never going to help you in, in, in your life whatsoever. So he kind of had some mind control with permission. And Absolutely. You know, you know, we didn't introduce you at all. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I, am John, I am John Kovacs. John Kovacs. And I live know. in a Dearborn, which is just outside of Detroit. Oh, that's, yeah, I've been to that. Okay. We, uh, we are in Lansing. Oh, well, what, I, I, of course I know where Lansing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about uh, only an hour and 20 minutes away. Yeah, but I've drove through there here. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, to, to the lay person, um, why? Let me, re let me rephrase that. Sure. I, I know some people look into remote viewing or the training because they have a free weekend, mm -hmm. or they have a little extra money. Absolutely. It's a fad, absolutely, and it's maybe it's something fun to do. Absolutely. So how do you respond to that? Well, I'm, you know, uh, if they want to become part of the fraternity, I'm a, I'm always going to welcome them, and I say that's phenomenal. That at least they're going out and trying. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, the bad part about that is, is how can you get a, a good idea of what's truly going on with such a complex discipline in such a short amount of time? And they, in which inside of their reality box, grab this training, create it into something else, and go out and blah, blah, blah to everybody else and tell them what remote viewing is all about. Remote viewing is not about a three-day weekend. It's about changing your entire perception and turning on certain areas of your brain that have been remained dormant your entire life. It almost and becomes this, a lifestyle. It becomes a lifestyle. I have to liken it to like a gymnast. They are mind and body operating as one. And this type of training, uh, when you want to become a gold, a gold medalist, we're talking about, you start to dedicate a good 10, 12, 15 years of your life. Not three days. And then, you know, and, and this is what a lot of these people are doing. And, you know, who, which trainer did they go see? That's, that's another important yeah, point, too. Yeah. You know, who is, who, are they qualified to, to teach the, this, this discipline themselves? And uh, there is no accreditation. There is no... Uh, certified board you will go in front of like a doctor to make you, uh, here's my walking papers that make me a remote viewer instructor. It's so dangerous, these people are going out and they may get the short end of the stick and then, and then go out and say it doesn't work. When in actuality, if they uh, took the time out to research it like I did and choose select individuals who have certification, at least the United States government, for 10 and 20 plus years of a, of a training, they will find it to be a very rewarding experience. Mm -hmm. Now, some some uh, people ask me sometimes, uh, well, do you have to be psychic in order to become a remote viewer? What do you say to that? I say that's absolutely false. I had no uh, strange, abnormal, anomalous experiences during my life, 
at all. And what I went into the remote viewing training, uh, if I can quickly explain it and say, you can always remember the past, and remote viewing will teach you how to remember the future, but you have to think in a different way. That's name my new book, Remember in Your Future. There we go. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. So we're all on the same plane. We're all on the same. We're all on the same page. We're talking about the same thing. Now, uh, we had a BK party mm -hmm. last night, and what they consisted of, and I can do it now, so I can actually show it to you in the studio where we fed the spoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now the next thing, uh, some of the people might want to know: Do you read money? Well, uh, when, once one gets involved with this remote viewing, an instructor will lay a sealed envelope on a table and ask you to describe it, and he'll show it to you in 15 minutes, and all he gives you is six digits. He'll give you six digits on a piece of paper and say, this is your address for this target, we want you to go ahead and do it. Once a person goes through that and accurately describes the photograph that's in the envelope, they under, hopefully, at that point in time, they'll understand that this was just an initiation process that their instructor was playing, I don't want to say a little game, but gently trying to bring them into the fold of the non-locality of consciousness that you can bridge and you can go out and see things. So if you can do that, if you can look inside this envelope and actually describe it, why can't you read a person's mind? And who's bounding you and telling you you can't? You know? Ethics. My yeah, really. <laughs> yes, really, really. Oh, I'm just going to limp here for a minute and you can answer if you like. Mm -hmm. If not, I understand. Now, in a gathering like that, like I said, there's some most advanced minds on the planet. Absolutely. Uh, are, are we considered a threat at this time? What do you say? Well, Ingo Swan, uh, who just got done lecturing not an hour ago, and the second part of his lecture uh, was standing up and uh, there were uh, individual scientists and physicists from the Central Intelligence and Defense Intelligence Agency who were sitting in the first row, not 10 feet away from him, as Ingo was up there saying that they told Ingo it was just about time for this program to get terminated because he was becoming dangerous up until the point where he could start to either read their minds or figure out the intentions of the military industrial complex. He said that himself, and this is an individual who is known as uh, uh, almost a Christ figure in the, uh, in the, re in the remote viewing community. So uh, that's, I could just quote that, and that sums up exactly probably what I feel also. Yeah, but it was, uh, there was a lot of interference because uh, I had to leave, I couldn't stay in the room. Okay. I actually had to leave. It's like um, my hearing got real blurry. Oh, wow. And my head went empty, and mm -hmm. so the viewers know what I did, I went up and smoked a cigarette. That's fine, if that's what it takes, yeah. Sometimes I ground myself mm -hmm. like that. I, I know uh, exactly what you're feeling, and it's real, it's, it's real, and there's good energy and there's bad energy, and uh, perhaps when we all get together it becomes so amplified that uh, it's like standing next to a loudspeaker where the music is playing very loud, it begins to irritate you over time. Mm -hmm. And since we're so unused to being around so many powerful so people so like many. this, mm -hmm. it's going to make us feel a little bit uh, queasy and uneasy, and I've experienced that also. Okay. Well, maybe that'll actually, we've, we've done, uh, we've done show some remote viewing, not that intense and not on location and not in the energy of so many and so on. Uh, I really appreciate you spending this time. Oh, with thank you. Oh, this thank was you. our first time meeting. So yes, it was. Really well. Yes, yes. Through we met through a mutual friend who's very special mm -hmm. to me, and I and I trust him, and so I had no problem speaking with you. Yeah, he called me. He said, okay. I, "Of course, I didn't know who he was." Uh -huh. So I, uh, Lynn Buchanan, I said, mm -hmm. I, "I said, Mr. Buchanan, I'm looking for a man." And he <laughs> looked back, and he said, "Oh, I know. Oh, that's what he looks like. That's what he's wearing." So I found you. Okay. You. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lillian. Okay. Okay, I'm sure nice. your, your we'll viewers you. will appreciate yeah. this, that you've taken the time to come out here. Uh, hopefully they will understand how lucky they are to have a person like you to go out and research this because the printed press would never, ever put anything like this out. And this is the straight information that, 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 they're, that you're giving to your viewers. A lot of the viewers, uh, well, we're not on a time right mm -hmm. here. 
lot of the viewers, uh, a lot of the friends, uh, uh, the only contact they have with anything like that is the Art Bell Show. Oh, the Art Bell Show, yes, yeah. Right, so so when you say remote viewing, it's at games. And I don't want the viewers to forget that Art Bell is an entertainer. I'm so glad you said that. So <laughs> and not, not an information not disseminator. If he is right. not interested in that, he's interested right. in staying on the air. Right, and so therefore, you know, you need to actually come to... You got you, it. You have to go to the, to the heart of the matter yeah, that's right. in, in order to get your... your there is no doubt about that whatsoever. Are yeah. oh, you just <laughs> summarized the whole thing good, for me. Good, good, good. So I can't thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Okay. And, and there you have it, uh, John Kovacs. And uh, of course, we had a lot of private conversations, and I really enjoyed this young man because he was so knowledgeable and uh, uh, projected the, um, the seriousness of the whole subject. Now, I wanted to tell you that the opening shot, I don't remember if I mentioned it, but the opening shot is a painting by Ingo Swan, and you can access this one, uh, that painting, and some of the others to my webpage. And, um, uh, because lots of times we make reference to him as an artist uh, that he is. Now, the next interview, and I like to say here, uh, I chose not to edit any of the interviews, so we left them just the way they were, and sometimes we said goodbye, and just as we said goodbye, there was one more thing which turned out to be rather interesting, and so I, again, I never edit anything, so you see um, the footage with all the little mistakes, if there are any, and most of the time, by synchronicity, they're not mistakes at all. Now, the next person you'll see um, is uh, Lynn Buchanan, and uh, and I like to tell you that he is available for classes. Um, as soon as we have like six people, he will come for the weekend. If that's of interest to you, um, I encourage you to listen to uh, Lynn Buchanan, and uh, and he is available for classes. So if we can go to the next clip. Um, and he'll join us in the lobby of the um, Double Tree Inn in Austin, Texas, where we did an interview. I want to tell you about uh, Mr. Lynn Buchanan, and we have him right here with us. How are you this morning? Fine. Yeah, fine. I haven't messed up too much today, so I guess I'm still doing well. <laughs> I, I think we're finally getting some sleep, huh? Yeah. It, uh, it was kind of hard. I sleep last night, and that made me tired. Yeah. yeah. Made you tired? Yeah. Well, and you are uh, a speaker. We are at the, well, I had already stated that earlier. We are at yeah. the remote mm -hmm. viewing conference, and um, yeah. you're pretty regular in doing in doing all the... The conferences? All the conferences. No, I, uh, I only go to the IRVA conference. Oh, I see. I'm a member of the IRVA board. And to the uh, remote viewing conference that I give every year. Mm -hmm. This last this year it was in um, uh, Clearwater, Florida. Excuse me. Uh, but uh, so that I won't compete with this conference, uh -huh. this conference is all speakers, mm -hmm. and you know people get up and speak one after another. Uh, my conference, I have people come and give workshops. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's hands-on. Mm -hmm. You go away with the skill you didn't come with, mm -hmm. and uh, so on, at my conference every year we have a uh, we have a slate generally of eight workshops, eight mm -hmm. or ten workshops, and uh, uh, it's mainly for remote viewers, for mm -hmm. people who are trained and who want to add new skills. Uh, most of the speakers and presenters who come to give the workshops assume that you already have some remote viewing training. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I, uh, I get far fewer people because mm -hmm. it's generally not the public that comes. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite a mixed crowd here. Yes, it yeah. is, yeah. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, this is a good, the IRBA is a great place for uh, people to come, get some history, mm -hmm. get some of the theory, and get, hear, the, hear the people who have... Uh, who have done this for a living and all. Uh, my conference is mainly for mm -hmm. people who are remote viewers already mm -hmm. and who want to add new skills to mm -hmm. what they already do. Well, you showed us how to bend uh, spoons the other day. Oh, yeah. That was really uh -huh. exciting, yeah. <laughs> How'd you do? Uh, well, I did 
Well, I did really well. Good. Uh, but being who I am, I said, well, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it in the studio. So, yeah. uh -huh. so, yeah. And so after a while, I just quit yelling at it and yeah. went somewhere else and collected that's, my thought. And I said, now I'm going to see if I can think it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I just bend them left and right. It was Good. wonderful. Good. Yeah. For most people, you have to put the energy in, put the energy in, mm -hmm. put the energy in, and then quit. Right. And just release it and walk off and let the universe do its thing, you know. Absolutely. And now, then, then when you come back to it, it's ready. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the, one of the question in in reference to that I have now when were there all new spoons in the middle of the room? Yes, there were. It, because I went back to get more. Yeah. And there were several were laying there. They were now bent. I think that instead of those bending on the floor by themselves, mm -hmm. which does happen. Right. I think that people were bending spoons and then coming up and throwing the bent spoons back into the pile. Okay. I didn't see that happen, mm -hmm. but I think that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've heard where it, it just, you know, it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what's next for you? I have a class in California uh, in a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, basic and then an intermediate class and um, then I have an intermediate class in October mm -hmm. and then my book is due to come out in September mm -hmm. or October I don't know which one um, and so when the book comes out I don't know what's gonna happen there mm -hmm. I don't know if it's gonna be big enough that they're gonna want me to go on a book tour or book signing or anything mm -hmm. like that now, now, the other question I ask occasionally, uh, uh, do you ever regret it? Have you ever regretted choosing uh, such a hard life for yourself? No. You haven't? Good. Not once. Um, well, the life I had before the CRV mm -hmm. was a lot harder than the CRV. Uh, it's, the CRV is a frustrating life. You have to deal with your own inabilities, your own mind, your own imagination, and, and all that. It's all an inner struggle, inner mm -hmm. war. Uh, before that, I was uh, working with intelligence, mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of spy work. You know, uh, lost three vertebrae in my back. And been, you know, just all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, so, physically going to the remote viewing unit was a lot a lot easier a lot easier mm -hmm. yeah mentally it's the biggest challenge I've ever had in my life yeah. and uh, somebody asked me the other day how long it took me to get trained mm -hmm. and I said 17 years and continuing <laughs> yeah. that's a good point it's continuing because people think oh I know how to do this and then yeah. it's always something that's right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was telling one guy today that the difference between CRV and these methods that people dream up, oh, I figured out a new way to remote view, and mm -hmm. then they go charging people to learn it, that the uh, difference between that and the military method that we teach is that um, for 30 years, we had a team of people working eight hours a day, five days a week, scientific oversight, scientists coming in and analyzing, military analysts coming in. We have 30 years of trial and error that we've already done. Yeah. And the new methods they come up with, 30 years from now, will be just as good as we are now. Like you hadn't thought of that before, huh? That's right, yeah. Yeah, I feel like and, that's uh, Yeah, we had thousands and thousands of experiments mm -hmm. and uh, somebody will come up with a, with a new idea and I'll tell them, well, we've already tried that and here's why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And they feel like I just shot them down. Yeah. Well, I didn't, you know. Yeah. We, we tried it and it didn't work. Uh, there are other ideas they come up with that we tried it and it did work. Mm -hmm. However, we didn't continue it because it had this other problem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the main difference between the methods that are being created by all the new people in the field now mm -hmm. and the military method is not a difference in intent or anything like that it's just that we're 30 years down the road on the road yeah we've no. made 30 years worth of mistakes mm -hmm. and learned from them <laughs> now c crv means controlled 
Uh, it used to mean coordinate remote viewing. Mm -hmm. uh, then people coming up with new methods said, oh, well, I can give coordinates too. And so uh, basically Ingo trained it to controlled remote viewing mm -hmm. because he said basically all these people, the one last thing they want is to be controlled. And uh, yeah. what it actually means is that the methods we've developed gives the viewer control over his own psychic processes and everything else. But the remote viewing is controlled, not the remote viewer. The remote viewer has the control mm -hmm. because he has all the techniques and everything else. But yeah, it's it's now, it now stands for controlled. Controlled, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ethics, uh, it, like, like you said, a lot of new people coming in, mm -hmm. take a class, write a book. Uh, start, yeah, what, start an instant. What would you tell people that is uh, generally interested? I in? tell people to look into it and be very careful. Careful. To ask people for their credentials, ask people for their experience. Mm -hmm. uh, to also figure out uh, what these people are for. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the control remote viewing. Uh, you have a long training period and then you get put to work in mm -hmm. the real world. Um, during that training period, we give you targets that exist, that we have pictures of, that we can give you immediate feedback on. Right. There are a lot of these courses where the second day in the course you're asked to describe the color of the Galactic Council headquarter buildings on the planet Zeta Reticuli or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And you say, no matter what you say, oh, you're right because you got it by remote viewing. Well, come on. Uh, you're throwing your money away if you take that course. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be careful. You have to look into it. Um, I, when I was uh, talking to somebody, the other uh, attendant here, a lot of people the motive here, uh, some people want to do something for the weekend. Yeah. Uh, that's not advisable. Well, a lot of people come to conferences because they want to... No, I'm talking about training. Just oh, training, yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, if you take training just to have something to do over the weekend, right. you must be filthy rich because training is, is not cheap. It's not cheap. Um, um, like mine mm -hmm. is right medium priced, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a thousand dollars for the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to Ed's course; mm -hmm. it's a two-day course, three thousand five hundred dollars mm -hmm. for two days. Uh, there are other courses that are cheaper and more expensive, and all that. But um, you also ask, have to ask yourself why you want to do this. Right. Um, if you want to just expand your mind and get in touch with the universe, there are cheaper and easier ways to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, remote viewing is a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work and a lot, it requires a lot of practice. Uh, a lot of people come to me and they say, um, I want to learn this so I can help find missing children. Mm -hmm. And I warn them up front that you're gonna first have to learn to remote view establish a viewer record, find your strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. work on it. And so we're talking two years of practice here. Yeah. Then when you get good, we'll start you on cases where somebody's life may depend on it. Yeah. We're not going to start you on cases before that. And then we're going to start you off easy with cases that are already solved. And so you may spend another year working your way into it. Mm -hmm. uh, what many people do is they'll say, oh, you want to save missing children? Fine. Here's a case that's active. And you've got this viewer who's not trained to handle things, to handle their own emotions or anything like that. They go in, and the first case they get is a child who has been molested, chopped into pieces, and spread over an acre of land. Mm -hmm. They actually get contact with that, and they never come back. They never come back to help anybody again because right. they haven't been prepared, they haven't been trained. Is this on? Yeah. I'm oh. running on the tape here. Are you? And so they haven't been prepared or trained or anything, and so you lose a good viewer. 
You do, yeah. There's, uh, you have to do it right. Yeah, and it's not, it's not helping the families either. No, it doesn't help the families either. Yeah. So. so anyway, I really appreciate that time and you putting, uh, you know, a little overview on the subject oh, of yeah, the module. And so out. I'm probably going to run into you more often. Okay. Yeah, um, the main advice I would give to anybody, there's a lot of good teachers, there are a lot of good talents and a lot of good methods mm -hmm. out there, but just be careful before you spend a dollar anywhere. Mm -hmm. Make sure that what you're buying is worth a dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, just, you know, be careful. So you have a wonderful remainder of the weekend and thank well, you, you too. for the thank interview. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, bye. And uh, that we make reference to rather often. Now, keep in mind, this was a three-day event, and so there was a lot of walking and a lot of standing. We were selling books. We were doing things. So I had this really, really bad backache. The next person that I'm going to interview, his name is Nick, and I can't pronounce his last name. And so anyway, Nick is a healer, and he helped me fix my back. He had me punch here and point here and sing happy birthday. And the, my back did not hurt anymore for the remainder of the trip, i like for you to know. And so um, if we can set up for the uh, interview with Nick, uh, the brilliant remote viewer that took care of my back for the remainder of my trip, and um, he was a very delightful person also. Yeah. Plane to catch, so we're going to make this rather quick. Okay. Uh, in, uh, I can't pronounce your name, unfortunately. It's uh, Nick Sofrolis. Sofrolis. Yeah. Very good. And uh, you sort of saved me. I had a really bad back. Mm -hmm. And you had me sing a birthday song, and I haven't heard since. So just want to put that in there. I'll work that in the show somewhere. OK. And you are originally from? Uh, Maine. Maine. The state of Maine. Mm -hmm. And would you tell me real quick what it is that you do? Well, I'm actually a licensed clinical counselor. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I also do uh, remote viewing, mm -hmm. and I also do healing. And mm -hmm. I uh, put together a way to, to kind of combine the remote viewing and the healing together. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of it is, I call it the intuitive technique, which basically is using your intuition mm -hmm. to help a person heal. Mm -hmm. um, I find that really interesting because most people think remote viewing it's totally technical and scientific, so it's real refreshing to, to get another spin on the story here. Well, f for me, the remote viewing really opened up my intuitive mm -hmm. powers, or my, my intuitive self probably is a better mm -hmm. way to say it. And from that, I kept on trying to incorporate it into my work as a counselor and a therapist. Mm -hmm. and, and you also do lectures? Of course you do, because we heard you speak. Yes, I, I do. I do conferences. Uh, this August I'll be in Oxford at an a energy psychology conference mm -hmm. presenting uh, something very similar to what I did today. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you ever come into the Seattle area, I'd like to pinpoint you down. You give us a call and give us a full demonstration in the studio. If I'll be happy to do that. Happy to do it. Please stay in touch. Okay, and I'll look forward to get one of your cards. Uh, yes, now. Uh, is there anything that you feel that is important to to share with the viewers? And then I'll let you close it off like that because sometimes what's important to me, sure. might, you know, I might miss something here. Well, from my perspective, I think everybody has the ability to heal and to heal others. I think it's just you need to uh, uh, develop or practice the techniques and I think you can become uh, fairly good at it in a fairly quick amount of time with the right amount of training. Mm -hmm. So we expect to hear from you again here very shortly. I hope so. And I thank you very much. And well, you have you. a safe journey home, huh? Thank you very much. Okay, I will. Thank you. Yeah, everybody was kind of in a hurry there. Um, the, the next uh, speaker we're going to talk to, I, uh, I'd like to say something about that. His name is Dr. Simeon Hine. He has a PhD in sociology, and he wrote this book that is accessible to my webpage, to the Crop Circle Connector, and you can find it there. Now, he looks at crop circles somewhat different than most of us do. Um, and uh, I had asked him about eyeless, so some 
of this crop circle search has look at is somewhat different, but I wanted to interview him anyway and give you an opportunity to see what he has to say. And so if we can um, get ready for their clip with uh, Dr. Simeon Hine, it's a very interesting book um, uh, from a different perspective um, on crop circles. He's speechless. Book I've ever seen. Hey, here Girl, goes. how are you? Hi, how's, how are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm sorry about that light. I can't turn that's okay. it off. Yeah, that's so. I'll ignore it. You'll ignore it. Okay, now, could you, uh, well, if I go this way, maybe. Is it out of your face now? Is the light out of your face? It's fine. Okay, wonderful. Now, kind of briefly, would you tell me what got you involved in the crop circle project? It was really remote viewing. Uh, remote viewing? Yes, we used to, you know, when you do remote viewing, you can view almost anything that you're interested in finding out more information about. Mm -hmm. And uh, towards the end of 1996, um, actually in the, around the middle of it, I had started to view crop circles over at the Farsight Institute in Atlanta, Georgia with Dr. Courtney Brown. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was curious as to what these crop circles really were because we had very interesting feedback from our viewing sessions about what was creating these and what they were involved with, the types of energies involved in crop circles. Mm -hmm. I met someone named Ron Russell in mm -hmm. 1997 and he, he was giving tours of crop circles in England. I thought this is the perfect opportunity to go over there myself and get feedback because when you do a remote viewing session, you want to get feedback. What were you really looking at? A picture? Right. The best thing is to visit the place. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll get really good feedback. And we went over there and I thought I'd meet the, the makers of the crop circles or whatever was doing this. Mm -hmm. And it was just, uh, it became a real mystery what was making these and why, they, what were the energies involved. And people have always reported strange effects around crop circles. And, I understand you, uh, my, the viewers are very familiar with Eyeless. I think you, I think you mentioned you ran into Eyeless? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know her. Yeah. She lives in the area, she originated over in the area mm -hmm. uh, where we live. That's right. Yeah. Okay, and then eventually uh, you, you figured it all out and put it in this wonderful book. We figured out that crop circles really create strange energies, and it's because they're shaped into sacred shapes or sacred geometry, um, that the shape itself seems to be generating energy. Now, in the past, people have always wondered, why does a crop circle create strange effects? And what we realized with our research was that it isn't who makes the circle that matters. The mystery seems to come from the actual shape itself. The crop almost acts like a crystal, a liquid crystal. The crop circles often appear in very symmetrical shapes, just like a crystal. And they're in a living material which has crystalline properties. So it seems that the crop formation is a, is a form of crystal technology and that it uh, transforms energy from one type of uh, frequency to another, which accounts for why people experience, often get sort of extraterrestrial experiences related to crop circles or things that they can't explain, uh, space-time shifts, Time shifts yeah. hearing sounds, um, equipment failure, balls of light. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the crop circle is a gateway to other types of energies and frequencies because of the shape. And you are still involved in remote viewing yes. now? I have you shifted right. your... No, no, I, I, I teach remote viewing in, in Boulder, okay. Colorado. Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, because um, they're very similar topics, and that's really why I wrote the book, is I realized that remote viewing and crop circles were actually very similar phenomena from one point of view, and that is that when you do remote viewing, the CRV system, controlled remote viewing, or coordinated remote viewing, you're working with ideograms, shapes. And those shapes become holograms. You know, so if you take Lynn Buchanan's course or anyone's course, he'll, he'll tell you that the ideogram is like a, a one or a two dimensional hologram. And so are crop formations, they're holograms. So we're dealing with shapes that are made by people that are holographic. And that's a very interesting area. And we heard Ingo talking yesterday, Ingo Swan was talking about subtle energy science. And uh, I had this realization a couple of years ago that these are both a form of subtle energy science. Um, they're actually two aspects of the same phenomenon is that if you create shapes with a certain intent, it can channel energy in from other places that you're not you're normally familiar with. That's right. Yeah. yeah. In fact, in the book there is a, 
Oh, you have a picture, and it said a circle maker. Yeah. And I looked at that, and uh, I don't see very well. That's one of my problems. And uh, I was looking at that. Is that of that video that they had taken? Uh, it's off my own video. It's your video? Yeah. Uh -huh. I was trying to place it. We, we were approached by people in, 19, in the year 2000 who claimed to be circle makers. And they offered to show us how they make circles. Uh -huh. And uh, we actually were interested to see what they knew about the topic. And we found that they actually were capable of creating very good circles. And that in the past, the idea had been that humans cannot make circles. Mm -hmm. But we found that these people were actually interested in creating magical spaces. They weren't hoaxers. They were, they were circle believers because they've seen enough things out there at night making circles that convinced them that they were really paranormal. And yeah. so we went with them uh, in the daytime, and then I was allowed to see one made at night. Uh, and uh, it convinced us that these circles really are magical, and it didn't matter if these people made them or E.T. made them or whoever. That's right. Yeah, these sort of billboards, you know. They're billboards. Uh, yeah, for, so. for, they're billboards for non-ordinary uh, energy and um, it's just another type of energy that we're dealing with in the crop formation. So I, I believe this. Be, I've seen the batteries fail myself while I was there. And there's nothing like experiencing something yourself to convince you it's real. It's one thing to hear somebody else's story, you know? That's very true, yeah. But when you experience it yourself, and that's really why I said I have to write the book, because I, it happened to me in those crop formations. Right. I've seen the things people have talked about, and it's real. And the media has always presented it as, it, it, you know, it's a man-made hoax. Yeah. Well, it is man-made to some degree. Uh, I, I don't know what percent, but a lot of these large ones over in England, I, I know the people that have made them, and yet those very formations have been the ones that have destroyed batteries, cameras, right. attracted balls of light and UFOs. And that means that someone up there is paying attention to these crop formations. These crop formations are a way of contacting other folks, I believe. No, I don't know. See, the, the crop circle that came in and... Uh I believe it was in last year, was in May. It looked like a face. Mm -hmm. Did you see that one? Yeah. Uh, By Chilboten Radio Telescope. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a take on that one? I don't know a lot about that one particularly, I have to be honest. Uh -huh. I, I don't think, I think it's possible that people could do something like that. I think they're capable of doing that. Uh, knowing some of these people, they're, they're very dedicated and they take a lot of time and in research into how uh, how to make patterns in wheat. They spend a lot of time researching this, but I don't know anyone that, that one particular. Uh, I don't think that it's necessarily extraterrestrial like people have said, but the main point is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter at all. Those are real formations. I, I think all crop circles are real. I'm convinced of it because I've seen what they can do. And my definition of real is anything that affects something else is real, right? If it has no effect on anything else in the world, it's not real. But if it has an effect on something somewhere, it's real. They have an effect on things, they're real. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think they're all real. And, uh, and it doesn't matter if you and I make it, or ET makes it, or the Earth energies. Right. Uh, they're all involved in this. It's just that the, the ones that humans make are definitely, uh, they should not be discounted or should not be denigrated and said these are lesser than the other ones. You know what it's like? It's like learning a language. Maybe ETs made them 10 years ago, and humans began to learn the language, and they embellished on them and made them more complicated. But that's the way evolution works, is one species teaches another species another, how to yeah. do something, and that's what we're seeing here, I think. Absolutely. And I, I really think that there was an extraterrestrial involvement in some of the ones in the past, based on my the information I have. Um, but it seems that humans came along and said, can we make those better? And a lot of these people used to be crop circle researchers, and they would wait at night on the hilltops for something to happen, and they got tired of waiting because it's in England at night, it's cold and it's rainy, <laughs> dark. And they said, maybe we can go out and make something happen. So they would go out and make something small and maybe hope that would attract something to happen. And they just made them fancier until they became these. I know that sometimes uh, people thought of patterns and then they appeared. Um, I, that happens all the time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. To Busty, Busty absolutely. Taylor yeah. and, and Colin Andrew. That is Andrew. often reported. Yeah, so. There's a telepathic connection to these. Absolutely. People have the image in their mind, and then two weeks later it shows up, and they didn't tell anybody. Up, but like in, in the book, there's a drawing of one of these. Yeah. Where the person was in one crop circle, yeah. and then they, in their mind, they saw another pattern, and yeah. then they drew it down. They said, wouldn't that be nice if it looked like that, and boom, yeah. It's there. And these are not people who make circles. These are just people who came over from the United States, and they said, oh, I see this pattern, and it's there now. And I know another case of a circle maker. 
he had this feeling he should go out and make one by himself, which he normally never did. And he went out and made this flower of life yeah. type of pattern. There was a group meditating on that same shape about a half mile away. They didn't know he was there. Oh my. Okay. And it showed up. So how do you explain that? Yeah, so there are very many opinions and uh, and like I said, we thought you might want to see this one. It's, um, it's a little different. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the next clip and that's the miracle clip. Someone had messed with the camera. We're going to play it to you uh, in its entirety. Uh, unedited, and uh, it was a miracle that we was able to save this footage for you. So bear with us, and uh, we are so proud of our miracle footage with um, Dr. Graf, one of the directors from the original Stargate. So enjoy. Yes, just have a conversation with Kevin us here, and uh, we are in Austin, Texas, and it's very rare that we ran into you. And, uh, we, we did interviews with some of the other friends, and we kept running into your name. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I wanted to ask you, uh, did you ever regret having chosen this life? Regret To have chosen this this life um, that you have. Oh, sure, I'm sure. Chosen, yeah. Maybe we do that, because I didn't feel about chosen. It's okay. She'll cut it and edit okay, it. One. Yeah, just, just, just relax. We're not very yeah, poor when we not chosen. <laughs> okay, you asked if uh, I regret having chosen mm -hmm. the particular line of work that I moved into in the mid 70s. There were times when I did. No question about that. It, <coughs> it was very difficult, uh, a lot of challenges. But I have to admit now, uh, no, I'm not, I don't have any regrets. Now, uh, I keep thinking back and I'm you know, looking at my past that, that I could have gone, either as a professional aerospace engineer or something else. And this, this is so different from that, uh, that I even amazed myself that I stayed with it. But what I've gained out of it is really a, a very significant worldview that I didn't have before. And I feel a lot more open and a lot more involved with the uh, you know, larger picture of things, mm -hmm. the environment, people. Uh, as an engineer, I was kind of narrow. Every look at an individual was but in this, in uh, remote viewing, inside research, you are working with people at many times at a very intimate level. And uh, I, I find that I, I really needed that kind of balance in my life to get mm -hmm. away from the purely technical into one that has more of a connection with people. And even though we have that opportunity in family life, you know, it's still very really narrow from mm -hmm. my point of view. We have now been able to expand it to a much larger uh, culture, to feel more related to anything. Yeah. Now, what do you say to the young people that would like to get into your footsteps? Do you have any pointers for them? Okay. If people want to continue or to get into a field that uh, brings them into contact with uh, parapsychology, which is a science of the field, or remote viewing, there are groups around that they can at least joy to see what it's like. But that's sort of like any group, you know, it's not going to get you through professional styles per se. You know? yeah. But you will get a lot of contacts and you get good ideas and it's worthwhile doing. But in order to get into it from a research point of view, then you may need to still go the route of psychology. Now I didn't, but I was very lucky that I didn't mm -hmm. do that. Because in psychology there's still the link between parapsychology, people studying the field of consciousness mm -hmm. and or even in neurosciences, but that gives more narrow and get away from maybe the, uh, the psychological aspects there. So I would say uh, choose a career if you do it toward the psychological side. Counseling, uh, maybe some type of therapy work with people, or even in the medical field. It is. Now, it's going to change. I don't know how fast this will be or how far in the future, but science like physics, well, I'm a physicist and I, I got into it, but I think more and more uh, people from the hard sciences will be opening up to this field and there may be a, a bridge between consciousness research and physics emerging. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping will happen. Then, then if that happens, it may not matter which particular field you're going. There's still ways of narrowing down mm -hmm. in an angle of kind of research. Now that's from a research point of view. 
But from an experiential point of view, we can do that any time. Just be open to the phenomenon and see how we experience it. Um, develop your intuition. There are many programs out there that allow you to do that. And even if you want to go to the point of uh, efficiency, becoming like a, uh, a cadet at some particular part, uh, you know, I'm not saying everybody should go out and be a psychic detective, but yeah. there is that avenue that you become, if you find you have a natural talent, then go the application practitioner route. If you like to research it, then go more the academic route. Uh, well, we, one of the things that we was listening to is that uh, remote viewing is here to stay, mm -hmm. and uh, it will just uh, expand more and more. Mm -hmm. And then I understand that at one time you was the director of, of the real life stuff. Yes, I was one of the directors. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a series of them over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the program ran almost 20 years, so you can only really have any one individual can stay with it that long. But I was in it in the late 80s, and early 90s, so, mm -hmm. uh, until 1993 when I retired. So yes, I did have that role. In fact, I created the name Stargate in the late 80s. Uh, it seemed like a good word to come up with it to identify our program. Uh, it symbolized reaching the, the range, the normal range of human potential. And, and people liked it in our group, so we, uh, we stayed there. Yeah, so um, at, at the end of the program, we'll give you a web page if anyone wants to. Uh, you, you're now lecturing and teaching? Yes. You're still teaching? Yes, I do workshops and uh, I, you know, presentations that people want me to and uh, yeah, I'm available for that kind of thing. Right now, I'm scheduled for two, in the, in the near future, two workshops, one in Durham, North Carolina, mm -hmm. one in Sarasota, Florida. And, but I also do workshops at the house, and that's on my web page. You know, contact me if somebody wants to attend a workshop there. Uh, I, I sometimes like to do individual, or maybe couples, no more than yeah, That's interesting, you get one-on-one as yeah. well. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's hard for me, but I like the interaction, and I can learn more. I learn a lot. You know, you think I'm teaching something? I'm, I'm the one that's learning. Did you not actually understand that? Because you know, each time I talk to a person, it's it's a give and take, and we learn yes. some from each other. Yeah, you know, and I'm always cool. willing to listen to people's direct experiences and because I I think the more people talk about these unusual experiences, that's what they're called, even though I don't think they're that unusual anymore. But the more there's a dialogue, the less resistance there is in the general public. For saying, oh, yeah, the premonition dream is just a bunch of nonsense. But the more and more people come out with credible information, that's correct. Whatever it is, I think the easier it will be. It's the easiest going to be. I, I'm holding up two books, and I will have them in the studio. Okay. Uh, one is River Dreams. River Dreams. Uh, the case of the missing general in our adventures in yes. psychic research. Yes, because when I was in the Stargate program, I was personally involved in some operational projects including trying to find a fugitive, and also an abducted army general in Italy when a terrorist group captured him. He had been hiding for six weeks, and there are many uh, ways in which he was trying to be located. And we were brought in to kind of, um, you know, as a, a experimental Yeah, you might say. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so I was in Italy helping to locate General Those are using my viewing. And then the name of the other book is Tracks in the Psychic Wilderness. That's right. That was my first book. And that was, that was written before the program, well, around the time the program was declassified. So I wrote that from a general point of view. I wanted to explain what the remote viewing was. I wanted to explain what synchronicity was. That's another word for a meaningful coincidence, which, which relates to remote viewing and ESP and all that. And I have a section in there on premiums. I'm an advocate for people to remember dreams, to work with them, and to look at the uh, psychic potential of dreams. And that's why I wrote that book. It's a general approach. And I also have sections in there on how to approach this. So anybody can read you know, five or ten pages in there and get a good idea of how to begin. And I also have a, um, a beginning 20 pages on a brief history of the program. Yeah, and we've been certainly been impressed. Uh, I We've touched on, we introduced remote viewing to yeah. friends before, but we've never been able to take them to the yeah. pioneers of this project, yeah. so I really appreciate it. Yeah, we see, a lot of us uh, don't even see it that way. We're so close to it, you know, the year goes by, another five years, another two years. For a while, you know, here we are. Yeah. 20 years later. 20 years later, yeah, and this is yeah, so well, amazing. It wasn't that. 
One net day, almost like 30 minutes. Yeah. Ooh, five minutes. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes. Yeah, so I really appreciate it. And I know you had a very long day, and mm -hmm. you have some more to go on. You know, I mm -hmm. appreciate you coming. Okay, well, I really appreciate your interest in uh, asking those questions. Explain. Uh, yeah, one of the things is a lot, a lot of times you talk to persons and they use vocabulary the average person doesn't understand. And so I've, I've been really fortunate uh, to be able to talk to everybody to in terms of work that the average viewer can understand and we've just been building. Yes, my work is uh, people in the community. I started here around 1970. And uh, so I, I understand, you know, the people's terminologies, what they will understand and what they won't. And I try to explain it in simple language without going too high or too low. And then yeah. see who they are, and then get right around that. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah. So did you have a nice visit in Austin? It's almost yes. over now? Yes, it's pretty quick. And I like to stay longer. But I need to go to Boston, leaving early tomorrow, to attend another conference. I'm giving two presentations there on the site of Yes, Yeah, so I'm, but I'm hoping to run into you in, okay. in my travel somewhere. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this is this is off the subject. What do you think of the freeways in Austin? <laughs> I haven't been on it. Oh, you haven't been on it, Mark. No. Yeah, I've been asking I've everybody. I've got the uh, shuttle and then the island. Oh, lucky you. I've never seen freeways like that. Uh, you know, you can't turn off and you can't, can't turn in. So it's uh, a real maze and a real challenge. Yeah. So. Okay. Nice, thank you very okay, much. Well, uh, and, unless I left something out, uh, did you want to add something? I'm going to mm. let you take it from there, but I think it's, it's just been job. wonderful yeah. this the, the, the only thing I would say is that uh, the 30 years of Stargate and reviewing research has uncovered something very fundamental, but it's not its not new. It's been around for a century. It's now looking at it in a new light. I think it will help. You know, I don't want to become grandiose here, but it might help revolutionize how we view the human being, what our role is. Oh, um, I, I have one more question, actually. You know, now we have the TV series Stargate. Mm -hmm. How close to the real thing is that exactly? Which one? Yeah. Uh, this, this, the, the television series Stargate. Oh, is there's that, no connection. It's not, not close no, at all. Stargate no, movie on television, or the be came out as a movie at first. It was just a mythological fiction. Mm -hmm. It was just by coincidence that the word Stargate was used. And then I used it, and that, that movie was used. There were about a year or two difference between them. But I didn't even know about the movie. Mm -hmm. And the Stargate television program is modeled after the movie. So it's, uh, thing. it's no connection. It's no connection, That's yeah. I just wanted to remember that came out the same. And now people like it. There are all kinds of Stargates out there. And there's a Stargate online. Yeah. 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 One night on Stargate. So, so do the, do the TV viewer end up in your program uh, on your web page? That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, it would be, but yeah. too much of that. Yeah. People that are interested.